Welcome to Math 31. This is a lesson on discontinuities. And this um, lesson will bring together some of the topics we've been working with prior, um, previously. You, we have covered continuity before, you will recall that, but we did it from a graphical perspective, which is very reliable, of course. But here we're going to be discussing it more from an algebraic perspective and using limits. Um, um, specifically. So what's going to happen on exams is that you will be asked to do this sort of operation algebraically. So um, a few things to keep in mind. Polynomial functions are continuous. We do know that. And if you're dealing with anything, you know, pick a function. y is equal to 2x cubed minus 5x squared. Well, that's continuous. There's no gaps in the graph. It's defined for all real numbers. There's no denominators which would interfere. There's no square roots or radicals or anything like that. It's going to be continuous. We know that. And in fact, rational functions of that form, one polynomial divided by another, are continuous where g at x is equal to 0. Now, I kind of cheated a little bit here. f at x over g at x, both are polynomial functions. So I know some of you are thinking, well, hang on. That's not correct if, let's say, the numerator is a radical. But two polynomials divided by each other. And of course, that is. My lawyer would argue that that is the definition of a rational function anyways. But in any event, the denominator cannot be equal to 0. So there's a built-in discontinuity right there. So we could say this. In general, a function is continuous at x equal a at that specific point if these three conditions are met. Number one, that the limit exists. So this means the left-hand limit at that point will be equal to the right-hand limit as we approach that point. And that's from the previous lesson. So the limit must exist. The next thing is that value must exist. So f and a, whatever number that you're taking the limit as you approach, it has to, that value has to be defined as well. And then the final is the limit, the number um, that represents the limit has to be equal to that point as well. Now that's a little hard to follow, but when we go through and see an example, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And then to find possible discontinuities, check the breakpoints, because most of these are going to be split, split functions, because there's not that much mystery if it's not a split function. And then we do note any other undefined values. So let's get into a couple questions here. Discuss the continuity of the following. That's typically how these things are worded. f at x is equal to um, 4 minus x squared if x is less than 1, then x if x is greater than or equal to 1. So we need to check the breakpoints. And um, the breakpoint in this case is x equal 1. There is no other possible discontinuity. There's no denominators or that sort of thing. So x equal 1. So we just need to worry about the breakpoint to see what's going on there. So we take the left-hand limit. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f at x. Now, be aware that when you're to the left of x equal 1, this function is in play. So we're taking the limit of 4 minus x squared. And all we do is substitute in 1. So 4 minus 1 squared is 3. So the left-hand limit is 3. The right-hand limit, the limit as x approaches 1 from the right side, well, it's going to be the function x. And when we take the limit, we plug in 1 into that, and we just get 1. So sadly, the left-hand limit does not equal the right-hand limit as x approaches 1. So that tells us that the limit does not exist. I'm going to put a lot more wordplay in this than I probably need to. But therefore, the limit f at x as x approaches 1 does not 
exist. And then I'll finish it off by saying, therefore, a discontinuity exists at x is equal to 1. Another way to word that, of course, would be to say something like um, um, it's discontinuous at x equal 1. I'm just trying to give you a few different looks. And if you did want to graph this one in your calculator, for some reason I didn't graph these myself, but no big deal. y1 is equal to 4 minus x squared, I hope, divided by, open your bracket, x is less than 1. And remember, to get the inequalities, you press second function, math, and that takes you into the test menu. And you probably want to give yourself a zoom 6 to standardize your window settings. And then y2 is equal to x divided by open bracket x greater than or equal to 1. So graph it and you'll see that there's a gap in the graph. It is discontinuous at that point. Now number two more of the same, except it's a more complex function. And please, at any point, pause me and go through the question. The two breakpoints are 1 and 4. We need to check them both. So the left-hand limit, so the limit of this function as x approaches 1 from the left, be careful we're going to be dealing with x squared over x. Now this brings to mind a very important point. This function has a built-in discontinuity at x equals 0. So x cannot be equal to 0 even though we'll divide by x to simplify that expression. Very important. So there is already a discontinuity. But we still, we go further with it and we see what else is happening at the breakpoints. So this will simplify to the limit as x approaches 1 from the left, x. So therefore the limit is equal to, replace 1 in, and it's just equal to 1. Do the right hand limit, carefully note which function is in play. So we're approaching 1 from the right side and that means the function is going to be y is equal to 2 because that's the function that's in operation between 1 and 4. And that makes it very easy because the limit is just going to be equal to 2. So clearly the left hand limit does not equal the right hand limit. So therefore the limit of the function as x approaches 1 does not exist. Now I'm going to eventually answer this question in terms of continuities but I'll note that for now. Then we check the other breakpoint x is equal to 4 and do the left hand limit. So this would be approaching four from the left, which means that we're going to be with the y equal two function. So it means that the limit is just equal to two. That's a straight horizontal line. And then the right hand limit would be the limit of the x minus three function as x approaches four from the right and substitute 4 in, 4 minus 3 is 1. So once again, the limit of this function as x approaches 4 does not exist. This whole exercise has been frustrating because we've got discontinuities all over the place. So it's discontinuous at x is equal to 0, don't forget that one, 1 and 4.
Now, you are probably thinking, shouldn't we be graphing these? And I am going to um, ask you to graph it in a few seconds, but I also want to remind you that you will be asked to do it algebraically and if you do take a post-secondary calculus course you will usually be required not to use your calculator at all in that first year so you really want to train yourself to make these observations uh, based on the algebra as much as you can here you can use your calculator to, to back it up but um, you would enter this one on your calculator this one would be a little bit more complicated but y1 the order doesn't matter is x plus 3 divided by and this is if x is greater than 4, so x greater than 4. That one's simple. But y2 is equal to 2. And here, we have to make sure we break up the compound inequality, because 1 is greater than or equal to 1, or excuse me, x is greater than or equal to 1, but less than or equal to 4. So I'm just going to go 1 is less than or equal to x. Close that bracket, and then open the other one and divide again which is x, excuse me there, take, get rid of that, x is less than or equal to 4. So you have to do each part of it, the upper and the lower limit, separately. And then y3 is equal to x squared divided by x, and here we divide by x less than 1. So you'll get a graph. We've actually graphed this one before, back uh, I think last week. So you maybe know what it looks like. But you'll see clearly that it's discontinuous. Let's do a couple more, or at least one more. This is a good one, because this sort of thing causes all sorts of problems. We've seen this sort of thing before, where you're given a rational function with the point of discontinuity, and then you'll be given a plug-in point. Now, when we do this one, we see that the breakpoint is 2. So really, we're trying to find out what's going on at x equal 2. It is defined at all values. x is, is a set of all, or is a member of the set of all real numbers. But x equal 2 is the, um, the breakpoint where we shift from one function to the other. So the left hand limit is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, and that function that's in play is x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. Because that function is in play for everything except for x equal 2. Now we go deeper into this one, and we will get the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. This one will simplify to x plus 2 times x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. And the x minus 2's divide away. So this becomes the limit of x plus 2 as x approaches 2 from the left. Get in the habit of writing that limit symbol down all the way until you take the limit, which we'll do right now. 2 plus 2 is 4. And then the right hand limit would be the limit as x approaches 2 from the right x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. So the same function. That 6 doesn't really get used, at least not yet. Now I'm not going to simplify this one again. It'll be the same thing. This is x plus 2 when you divide out the x minus 2 factors. And 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. So the limit of this one is 4. So the left-hand limit is equal to the right-hand limit. So therefore, the limit of this function, f at x, as x approaches 2 is equal to 4. But in terms of continuity, do not crack open the champagne just yet, because there's two other conditions that need to be met in order for us to establish continuity. So I'm just going to cycle back for just a second or two, go back to the rules, and here we are. You see, we've got this. The limit exists. We also have this. f and a exists because f at 2 is equal to 6. But the problem where this one breaks down is the fact that the limit is not equal to the value at that particular um, point. So I'm just going to go back to where I was. Oops, not too far. And we are aware that f at 
2 is equal to 6. So therefore, the limit as x approaches 2 of f at x is not equal to f at 2. So therefore, this function is discontinuous at x equal 2. So even though the limit existed, it, that wasn't enough. And here as well, by inspection, you would have been able ha to handle this one without a lot of problem. Let's do one more, and I think that should take us to the end of this, uh, the end of your tolerance of this type of problem. So the breakpoints. Well, we have them indicated as 0 and 2. Also should be aware that this means something, the square root of x. x is greater than or equal to 0, but we're okay because this is exactly what we're told with that. So everything's fine. There's no other gaps in the graph. X cannot be negative, you know, um, for this function anyways. So that was a potential concern, but it's not a real one. X equals 0. Get the left-hand limit. So this is the limit of X being or x approaching 0 from the left. So you'll see, now this one's um, kind of, uh, I guess I can start with negative 2, um, no big deal. Oh well, whatever. Um, less than 0, we're going to be, I paused for a second there when I realized that I, for some reason I thought that was positive 2. Um, anyways, um, to left of 0 would be this function, x, negative x squared plus 2. So that's in play from negative 2 to 0. So that's where we want. Plug in 0, and 0 squared plus 2 is equal to 2. And now we do the right-hand limit. So this is the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. These things get a little tedious after a while. And that would be the root of x plus 4. So that's, um, that's, w that's the function, keep in mind, when x is greater than 0 that we're dealing with. So the root of x is 0 plus 4, it's equal to 4. This is a total disappointment. So therefore, the limit of the func function f at x as x approaches um, 0 doesn't exist. Kind of disappointing, but we have a, we're guaranteed to be discontinuous there. Now we try x is equal to negative 2. See what happens. So um, we take the left-hand limit. x approaches negative 2. Oops. The limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left. So this is going to be this function, negative 2. So it's equal to negative 2. And then we go after the right-hand limit, which is to the right of negative 2. So the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right side, and that would be negative x squared plus 2, which is in play from negative 2 to 0. Plug in negative 2. Now be careful with this one. It's negative negative 2 squared plus 4. So this becomes um, plus 2. So that is actually for negative 4 plus 2 is equal to negative 2. So therefore, the left hand limit is equal to the right hand limit. So therefore, the limit of the function as x approaches negative 2 is equal to negative 2. So we're doing this one blind now. We've established that the limit is equal, but the question is, is it continuous at that point? Now I'm going to bring up a new screen so we can have more space to work. But we know that we've got a discontinuity at x equals 0, but the question is negative 2. So my next point is, does f at negative 2 exist? Because if it does, and if that number is equal to the limit, then we're in business. Now, according to what I see, the function in play at x equal negative 2 is an inclusive interval. 
So it's negative negative 2 squared plus 2. So it's that function, and we just worked this one out before. That's negative 2. Okay, so it does exist. And then, does the limit of this function as x approaches negative 2 equal f at negative 2? Answer? Yes. f at negative 2 is equal to negative 2 is in fact equal to the limit of the function as x approaches negative 2. So we've got it. So therefore, we would say that this graph is, so f at x is continuous at this point, but it is discontinuous at x is equal to 0. x equal negative 2 is okay. So tedious work, but very reliable. And then if you did graph this one, which I'm not going to bother doing, we would get a fairly good look at the graph and we could see what's going on. So I'm going to stop right there, but that's, uh, that's what we have. And the next lesson will move on to infinite limits, which is a fairly straightforward topic. Thank you for your time.